what's going on, everybody? For the New River Battalion, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Harrison, and you're watching Torched Ones, the show where we have answers to your burning questions and even hotter wings. Today, we're doing our second summer version of an end of summer episode where we talked to three of our cadets who attended some of our most unique training opportunities. Carson Modernock is a senior. She hails from Brambleton, Virginia, just outside the Beltway in the National Capital Region. Carson is a member of Mike Company in the Corps of Cadets and Ranger Company in Army ROTC. And she is the fall semester regimental commander of the Virginia Tech Corps of Cadets. Carson is not only a United States Army paratrooper, but also graduated the basic military mountaineering course this summer before elbow dropping advance camp and returning to assume her duties as Reggie Commander. She has her heart set on branching aviation on December 5th, along with our next guest. Bridget Carell is also a senior. She's from Ridgewood, New Jersey, which sits 20 miles north of Midtown Manhattan. Bridget is an India company in the Corps and will be the Army ROTC Battalion Commander this fall. She attended the Corps of Cadets Global Scholars trip section to the Vestval and the Siegfried Line uh, this summer, coincidentally with me, and then headed off to Smash Advance Camp before turning southwest and attending CTLT with both Armor and Aviation Units at Fort Cavazos, Texas. Zach Woodcock is from Alexandria, Virginia. He's an academic junior and an MS3, though a sophomore in the Corps, and he will be a fire team leader in the India Company and is the public affairs officer for our very own Echo Company, Chase the Wolves. Hey, Zach hey. attended Cadet Command's basic camp last summer and then the four-week cadet field training experience at USMA, the United States Military Academy at West Point, this summer, which is very similar in structure and purpose to advanced camp and where he earned the coveted Recondo badge. He is also considering aviation, must be something in the water around here, or maybe CW5 retired Greg Calgary is having an impact. And like both Carson and Bridget, comes from a family with previous service in the military and in particular in the Army. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. What would you like to talk about today? I'm, I'm mortified right now. I can't even think of anything else. I think one thing we need to talk about, sir, is why you don't like McDonald's. It's That's disgusting. True. It's the worst food on the face of the planet. <laughs> He's not balling on a budget like we are. All right. we are I'm budget. broke, sir. We are babe. All right. Well, why don't we go to our first piece of protein? This is the Truff Dark Side Sauce. Notice Dark Vader up there. I promise you it's not as intimidating as the Dark Lord himself. Let's dig in. This one? This one? Which, which yes, the one on the, the end. Okay. The one. Oh, hey, least dangerous on the right, most dangerous on the oh, left. Oh, wow. So you I was want to start on the get, right. I was about to get Wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. The whole thing, thing at once? Yeah. Least <laughs> spicy, but okay. Carson, you brought home two badges two summers in a row. How was the basic military mountaineering course, and how would you recommend to others to prepare to attend that course? It was really cool. It's very practical. Uh, you learn things like Kazavak, uh, navigating technical terrain with the combat load on which was very cool. Uh, rock climbing, rappelling, Kazabak systems, and then we did this big culminating exercise with your squad. It's all in a squad uh, where you, it was like four hour movement to get your, your Kazabak from the high angle shooting range, which was really cool, uh, back to the camp. And so that was awesome. Honestly, the best way to prepare is to rock a lot. It's a gentleman's course, there's no smoking, because they, they'll tell you straight up in the beginning of course, the mountain's smoky for them, they don't need to do it, and they're right. Um, they're, my class definitely struggled <laughs> a little bit, but I felt pretty prepared um, just from all the rocking that we do here. And then knots, the knots test got a lot of people, so just knowing the knots beforehand, which they aren't super hard, you don't need to do burbage or anything, but just being able to tie them correctly, um, was super helpful, which I already knew from Ranger Company, because we often know that all those knots. So I came in very well prepared for that. Very cool. Bridget, tell us about the Global Scholars program. What did you get to do, and what did you learn while doing it? Well, Global Scholars was hands down the best thing I've done at Virginia Tech. That was a phenomenal experience. Carson can also speak on it too, because she did it last year. Um, you did the big trip, but I learned, basically, I was thinking about all the things we've learned this semester, platoon operations. 
you get to conceptualize all that stuff on such a bigger level that you have like really no exposure to besides in that one environment unless you like do reading on your own and that took what we did and made it in a picture that I never comprehended before it's like how would commanders physically feel on the battlefield how are they making the decisions they made so I got to study the wall river crossing that was my presentation and I got to see what the major did, who was tasked with crossing that river, the steps he took in the headspace, like we gotta travel there and I gotta present m like my research and see exactly where he was in that headspace and he had to get his element all the way across that dangerous river. Yeah. And it's awesome. And we went to the Netherlands, yes. Belgium, Luxembourg, and Germany and saw battlefields from uh, the Battles of the Hurricane Forest, the Battle of the Bulge, and Operation Market Garden, as well as uh, a, a counter the counterattacks happened. So it's pretty awesome. A lot of easy company location from Band of Brothers, which was pretty amazing to stand in those foxholes and imagine what it was like to fight in the boy jock. Good stuff. All right, Zach, you conquered cadet field training. Tell us about the experience. What's it all about? Sure. So for me, in the simplest terms, it was a great introduction to all the different branches the Army has to offer. For West Point cadets transitioning into their sophomore year, it is their first real hands-on tactical experience. And to them, it is also a good branch introduction. I had a lot of that tactical experience going in. So all that was a really good refresher and really built my confidence up with those skills. But for me, I got to do a tank simulator. I got to shoot a mortar round. I got to shoot a howitzer, load and fire a howitzer. Um, we had a big four day FTX at the end of the whole thing that was super neat, super cool in the mountains of West Point. And we ended that FTX with a really cool Kazavac and Xfil in two Chinooks. And that was probably the coolest experience I could ask for. And tell us what that shiny thing is right there in your chest. So this, um, this is my Bracondo badge that I earned at Cadet Field Training. Basically, we do a bunch of different physical exercises and we get, we're getting graded on basically every event and you have to uh, exceed in every one of those events to receive this Ricondo badge. I was one of two ROTC cadets that had gone to receive the badge and I would say maybe just under a fourth of all cadets there earned the badge. That's what's up. Good job. I, I remember getting my Rakondo badge. It was the first time I got like an army piece of flair besides just the ribbon at the time that everybody wore. And I was like, I kind of like this. <laughs> and fortunately, I was obviously able to have a lot of opportunities to go to lots of courses, but it started with that one. So it's pretty cool to see it on your chest. Okay, here we go. This is seeing double. It's a delicious sauce. I assure you, it is an increase in rigor. Carson, which one would you like? I feel like I have to stick to the side now. Okay. Like I, you know what, that yeah. one? Okay, I'm getting like the a, breaded one. Like Do you think the breaded one is tasty? I'm gonna do that. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm not giving enough Science time. indicates otherwise, maybe but it's gonna <laughs> sometimes they just hit differently. How many units is it? Mm. It'll be in the video. Oh, okay. I'll show you at the end. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, Zach. Sir. You and 29 other cadets very recently got to be the opposing force or the op four for a major training event with the 75th Ranger Regiment. Tell us what you learned from those awesome Ranger NCOs and officers in between seeing one of the most elite light infantry units in the world do what they do best. Yes, sir. So uh, physically, the most of the training we got was in CQB, close quarters combat. We're clearing rooms as a squad and fire teams. We're, we're throwing flashbangs and we're clearing like three story buildings, you know, back to back. We're trading out leadership and we're kind of working through the, how complicated and how much brain processing that can do and how quick and comparing it to how quickly they do it when they're killing us basically, sir. Um, but just being able to be, surrounded and talk to all of these big ranger dudes who knew what they were talking about they were crazy it was crazy seeing how physically fit they were and how much they were able to talk about leadership we got a brief from the the bc and it was the coolest thing in the world and no you can't you can't get an opportunity like that anywhere else to to ask a leader like that questions and 
it really was an amazing experience there. Awesome, yeah. We were super excited they thought of us when they were looking for an assist and um, always excellent to those cadets, especially to senior NCOs from that organization because they are a very special breed. Okay, Bridget, Carson, where does the desire to be an aviator come from? Besides the fact that everyone will admit worldly birds are pretty cool. For me, it hadn't really occurred to me until pretty recently, my mentor, Gracie Schwab. Shout out um, Gracie. This is the third Gracie. time she's been in one of these videos indirectly. Yeah. She's the best, uh, best mentor I could have ever asked for. She made me assess Ranger Company with her, actually. So she's the reason that I have grown as much as I have. Um, but she's at school right now for Blackhawks and she just absolutely loves it and just has never said anything but high regards for the aviation community and it really struck me as something that would suit my personality re really well and something that my skill set I think um, could be used proficiently in. Um, so that's where it kind of came up and then the more, I've, the more I've studied for the SIFT and the more committed I got to the process I just realized like that's where I want to go. Bridget? So I actually, fun story, I came into Virginia Tech wanting to be a JAG. And then I got to school and realized four years, you know, maybe I don't want to go to law school. It's probably not in my future after taking a lot of those types of poli-sci classes. Would not be happy. And then it's kind of like, I think it's funny the way life works. A bunch of things popped up and just kind of like, it's like when you keep seeing signs and it was like kind of go aviation. And I really was also influenced by Mr. Calvert too. All right, well here we are almost halfway. You guys are doing awesome. Are you ready to continue or is something you wanna talk about before we do? I wanna stall so <laughs> back, I'm so ready. No milk, no water. Well, I'm gonna dry out my mouth first. I did no milk, no water last time and I, I think I earned my right to have milk and water this time. Hey, but you? I'm, I'm all the way, no milk, no water. Hey, the, the only rule is don't quit. Besides that, this is all about fun. Don't worry. Yes, all right, here we go. Speaking of aviators from the New River Battalion, Christian Seal, second lieutenant type, also in flight school, brought us this barbecue sauce, actually, from somewhere in the vicinity of Fort Novacell, Alabama. It's called Don't Fear the Reaper. It's pretty good. Let's do sure it. This, sir. This is my crispy level. You know, the more I eat it, the, the more, more I get. <laughs> it's a little dingy. Great, but it's uh, it's not bad. I'm, so I'm gonna start cussing out Christian Seal. <laughs> All right, Zach, you joined the Corps of Cadets as an academic sophomore. What attracted you to this experience after having total freedom as a normal <laughs> student? So, I'll first start with why I came to Virginia Tech. The the history, the culture, and then the football, honestly. That's what's up. Some of the, the three three greatest parts of Virginia Tech for me, and the whole reason I committed here is completely regular dude straight out of high school. And about halfway through my freshman year, I started to think about what, kind of what connects those three things and what made those things so fun for me. And it came back to the cadets. And I'm a political science major. I see them in my classes all the time. I felt like they were really going and going out and getting stuff done while I was, you know, sitting at my computer playing video games and studying, but not really getting out there. And so I wanted to get out there and start taking steps forward to a future career and I was here and it was super easy just to walk into an office and, and talk to Army ROTC. And so why did you come to Army ROTC? So my dad served. That was probably the, the big nail in the coffin for that one. But the thing that Army has for me over all other branches is choice and options. And I don't mean to sound like a recruiter here, but like you really can do whatever you want in an army uniform and get all the benefits and do great things for great people in the army while still doing what you want. And I don't know, I still kind of don't know exactly what I want to do, but I know I want to do cool guy stuff in a cool guy outfit and 
I feel like the Army's the best place to do that. Get paid to jump out of airplanes and fly helicopters. That's not yes, a sir. bad time. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we're going to bring back one of my favorite games, The Wheel of Death, Gosh. as Serena Jean <laughs> named it. Uh, the game is called Over Under, where you have to guess if the true value of the question is over or under the quantity I'm going to give you. If you lose, you get to spin the chicken roulette wheel and experience a random sauce. Do you understand the rules? Boy, do I. All right, well, I, I tried to pick ones that make sense. Might challenge you a little bit, but I think they're all attainable. Number of cadre in the new River Battalion. Is it over or under 19? And you must differentiate if you want to include different types. All over. You all got to pick, you all got to pick an answer. Oh, one so of we've, got, we've got, we've got. Oh! What about we save a mind? I feel like that's a safe one. Does Mr. Calvert count? Is it, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're going to go with service members under? I can rock with service members under. We can, I can rock that. Service members under. Final answer? No. <laughs> Come on, Commander. Make a choice. Do your high ranking go? <laughs> service members under. Unfortunately. <laughs> it is. It is 20. There are 20 no service way. members in this battalion. Uh, so I'm going to have to ask you to pick someone to spin the wheel of death. Nothing. <laughs> call, call him on the field. Call him on the field. Stands. Uh, Listen, in my experience, Incomplete. the more aggressive looking they are, the better for you. All right, here you go. I didn't totally soak them. Yeah, you got to like dab it on the. Nap. I took a very average piece. Nope, no dabbing. No dabbing. <laughs> no like mix the bit. Not Cheers. Wait, this way. let's do the, the, the three way like. Oh, like wedding cake. Wait, you gotta, wait, you gotta. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are like tripping. I love it. Maybe if I keep it on the roof of my mouth, it'll be okay. Nope, probably not. I would recommend <laughs> not, but that, it's up to you. Went to the back of my that throat. That might hit the it's back of my throat. It went immediately. It's, bad it's in the back. All right, here's a very important question, especially if the three of you want to fly helicopters to the United States Army. What is the founding year of Army aviation? Oh, bad question. Over <laughs> or under 1980? I want to say over. It's got to be under. It's got to be a history thing. Like, I think it's supposed to surprise us. Let's see. Yeah. In the 80s? Of Army Aviation. Well, helicopters. The founding of I'm Army like, Aviation Army, Army, it was Vietnam, all Army Aviation. Vietnam, Chicken Hawk. The like World Wars. Yeah. Like, I, think, I think the 80s. Is that like a thing? 100%. Just like a runner's high. This is actually, I feel, this is better. Mm. Okay. Final answer. Over or under? I'm saying under. Okay, so my dad's a great example of how this used to work. Oh, God. You commission in the Army. You decide you want to be an aviation officer. You stay with your original branch, but you go to flight school and you train. So he was technically an armor officer flying Cobras because Army aviation wasn't formalized as a branch until April 12th, 1983. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, guys. All right, Zach, spin the wheel of death. I'll spin it. Never gonna <laughs> I will. I would do it in solidarity, whatever it is, and I'll I'm make gonna, it for the prep. Wait, so the milk helps. That one's green. That Job like will get it out, or should I just? I'm just a girl. I feel like light headed. Oh, this is a weird girl. feel. I hate milk, but I'm like. I'm gonna take a sip. Cheers. I'm Cheers. Not. Hey, good for you, man. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll do Jablo and Hellboy to catch up. Why does you. milk have a weird like? Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, make crazy. way. You know, like in like the old. That means you get the oh, big piece. It's green. It's like pesto. I want this one. This is a definitely. Did you really with that really bad Definitely one not pesto. Uh, <laughs> I wish Cheers, you, guys. You sent it. Maybe I need to wait to do react. Or no, just it's better not knowing. Like. No. Number of NRB cadets that scored a 540 or above with at least 80 in each event. Advance camp 24. You're trying to game it. I'm trying to go off. We had the PowerPoints in front of us today. So please. there was a 3% not pass rate. 
Cut that out of the That's back. not. <laughs> five for you. No, 3% not passing height and weight. I think it's going to be over. I want to say over. I would hope it's over. I hope. I'll rock with over. I'm going to. I'm opposite. No, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> The number was 40. I. <laughs> Listen no. All right, BC. <laughs> I would just like to say, huh? I, I told you so. I really thought you guys would carry the I same I thought we were here to make I, the sir, NRB look it. good. I think that's what happened last time. We got all of them wrong. Go for it. Pesto again? Pesto? Oh, no, I like that one. Oh, no. Give me the pesto. This one is crazy. Can you spin again, sir? No, that one, was, that one wasn't that bad. No, that one wasn't bad. Spin again. I should have suggested it. I'm sorry, guys. You're okay. Good oh, Just spin one more time. That looks indecisive. That's so good. Okay, I'm, looking at the, I'm looking at the heat indication on the back, and it's not looking. You see, you're going with the smallest one. Oh, okay. no, but there's a I'll good sauce. The I'm looking at it. I'm taking the brunt. Don't with the worry. Sauce I'll take the chicken big ratio. One. I don't know. Look at this. Look, at, look at the Andy. Zoom in on this. The ratio of sauce to chicken is different, so therefore it is harder. This has more sauce, therefore I think it's harder. This wasn't terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, you survived the wheel of death. <laughs> Somehow, <laughs> it hit every limb falling out of that tree. However, it's about time to move on. So, is there anything you want to talk about before we go to our next bit of chicken? Sir, what are the odds we get you to crowd surf at a game, football game? 100%. 1 million percent. Ooh, you are to here, folks. I did push ups. You are to here. I did push ups on your Ranger Company homie's shoulders the last game when I was the pregame salute. You did. You did do that. Shout out to. I think it was Spencer Prislak and Zach Rosen. Probably was. Um, that checks. Uh, would most likely. Turns out mm -hmm. that's also when I got my airborne wings. I think knocked loose because they later they were hanging down off the airborne. Getting after it too much. All right, here we go. Now this is a good time. This is a new sauce. It's called Funky's Dark Star. Okay. This is a whole new experience. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. Mm. That's not a wing. That's milk. <laughs> <laughs> Does it taste cinnamony to anybody? Yeah, I think definitely has some cinnamon. It's giving cinnamon. Look at you, sussing out some subtleties. I don't think yes. I taste it. <laughs> okay, no, guys, well, all three of you chose steak over chicken. So obviously you share some common taste, but <clears throat> there's a split over where to eat both on and off campus. Bridget swears by the waffles at West End. Carson and Zach think that Turner is the beast. For off campus, Bridget prefers greens from Carson Hokey House. At least for fun. <laughs> Defend your positions. Trash can. <laughs> can I say that? Man, I love a trash can. Amen. Um, on top of the fact that they have good fried pickles. <laughs> the, their food is actually really good, but I love darts, pool, and a trash can. And some good friends. That's a, that's a recipe that's for good Sharkies. Sharkies is really good. Food is about the experience, and that is an experience. Home water. And then Turner is obviously the best because you have origami. Miso Beef Week is like on my calendar. That's yep. um, <laughs> And Szechuan <laughs> beef. Any beef, really. Um, it's catching up. Kadoma. I love you. Like, uh, crepes. I love a crepe. I'm like, I'm a big bag of <laughs> food. So Turner is where I can get the, the most concentrated area of good food. Bridget, why waffles at West End? <laughs> Sir, I'm gonna stick these. <laughs> <laughs> the waffles at West End. Um, <laughs> trash and was just, they're really great. <laughs> what makes them great? It's something about them. They just got that character to them. My friends. Freshman year, I always ask to go to West End on the weekends for breakfast. Because one, I need to use dining dollars because I am not made of money. Oh, my nose is runny. <laughs> <laughs> um, Drink the milk. <laughs> but also, I think the specialty waffle, like I love strawberries. It tastes really good on it. <laughs> it just really brings the meal together. And then you get the home fries, you get the sausage on it. It's a lot of food. I love food. 
Yes, you do. Yes, I do. <laughs> I told you. Yeah. <laughs> no, she's Pac-Man. I, I'm I, telling you, all summer long, Bridget was attacking the food that was available and snacking. I'm a big snacker. I think I gained like 10 pounds on Google Scholars last year. So I, I ate bread so and good. cheese for two weeks. My bank account was hurting though. I spend all my money on food. It's nothing else. I don't spend money on anything besides food. That's why McDonald's is the go-to. <laughs> Taco Bell? Taco, oh, Taco Bell. That's, that's my I guilty fast food I mess up Taco Bell. place. <laughs> this is an interesting feeling. I'm so scared of watching you right now. I'm good. Do you know what? Do you guys know what capsaicin is? It's a neurotoxin. So your body thinks it's being attacked, and you have to metabolize it. That's why the only solution most of the time Do is to, like, time. Oh. Awesome. We're gonna go on a hot girl walk and work for soft. I think. Hey, a ten minute walk after you eat will disrupt the hypoglycemic process. So, so don't do it's that. It's good for you. No, you no, shouldn't. Do that. Excuse me. All right, Bridget, your dad is named. Steve Carell, That's which is true. very similar to Steve Carell yes. uh, of Office and Anchorman fame, <laughs> mm-hmm. Michael Scott, amongst other things. Did this help or hurt you growing up in Ridgewood, and how did you learn to pump gas? Okay. Oh, that's a multifaceted question. So my dad, his name is Steve Carell. The one benefit of that name is anytime we book restaurant, re- I can't speak, this spicy on my tongue. Um, the restaurant reservations, he would call and say, hey, I'm Steve Carell, because we get the best table in the house every time. Because people would be like that, and then they'd see my dad, who does not look like Steve Carell at all, and be very disappointed. I say, were they, were they, up, they get upset, or was it just, oh? That happened to my parents cool. one time, they were at a dinner reservation in the city, and they got like a really nice, like table at a restaurant and they just looked at my dad and shook their head they were they were like you're not steve carell and he was like here's my license yes i am just not who you thought and then pump and gas i'm a jersey resident born and raised dirty jers taylor ham that's what the big order is called i was exposed to taylor ham for the shout out vincent ruda and his wonderful family Taylor Ham. They made me Taylor Ham for the first time in my life. It's and I'm the most obsessed. delectable. It's a New Jersey delicacy. Um, I could write a TED talk on why a Taylor Ham is the most delectable meal ever. I about it yesterday. It's so good. It's amazing. It's Can you describe it for those who have? Yes. So it? my bagel order is on everything bagel, Taylor ha- Ham, egg, cheese, hash browns, salt, pepper, ketchup. So every weekend I go to the bagel store I, I see my bagel lady. She knows what I want, and she's like, "I got you." Yeah. I've got good good friends in New Jersey. Um, shout out to Rick and Sarah. What up? Who introduced my wife to the New Jersey bagel and diner subculture? And Cindy's a big fan now. But back to pumping gas. Pumping gas. I. Yes. I my whole life. I just go up to the pump and say, fill her up with the 89, please. And I just hand him my card because it's illegal to pump your own gas in Jersey. That's right. It is, so I cannot do that. And then I get to the state of Virginia and I sat in my car with my friends and I waited and I looked very stupid. And then I, they were like, are you going to pump your gas? And I was like, what? So I did not know how to pump my own gas. So who taught you? Um, some of my buds, because I got, for the last three weeks of freshman year, my dad drove my car down, and I, I lucked out for those last three weeks. And they were like, how do you not know how to do this? So here we are. Look how far you've come in a short amount of time. But it is time for the last dab. And as you know, it is tradition around here to put a little something extra on it. You don't have to. Yes, we do. I won't judge you, but others might. I will judge you. I'll let you do your own dab. All right. It's no, already we're covered. Even. It's, it's covered even. in the last it's dab. Even. That's a last it's dab. Even. It's, it's even. even. No, no, you're gonna outdo us, and it's embarrassing. Yeah, I, I, I gotta do it a little bit. I don't. Are we doing the wedding cake for this again? Hey, go ahead and sure. safe that weapon system right there. Sure. Should we do it? Friends, don't let friends. Uh, do the last dab involuntarily. All right, ready? All right, here we go, guys. Cheers. Yeah. Best of luck. Cheers. Godspeed. Are you joining on the wedding cake? Oh, I don't. I don't know if we can do it with this space available. Enjoy. Okay. Oh. 
Hold on. I'm about to see you guys. Oh! Is it already there? Mm -hmm. Oh my god, yeah. Hey, yeah, it. is it already there? I don't have it. It's fine. Find your Zen space. Be okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my. I didn't put the sauce on my tongue. I put it on the roof of my mouth. Is that a mistake? All right, Carson. That's the last dab attempts to erase all of our memories. Oh, wow. And melt down our brains. What inspired you to want to bring back core traditions like the rat sale? Also, how is Zeta? Slim. Um, good <clears throat> morning. So, sweet little baby Jesus. Hang on, guys. Wow. <laughs> I feel in my teeth. <laughs> Mom, I want to go home. <laughs> this is the same feeling. I'm living there with you guys. It's okay. We'll be all right. So, um, wow. Core traditions. Yeah, I listen. The best thing about the core is the tradition. Okay, I'm gonna get this out of the way. Okay, the best thing about this is that we have traditions that connect us to our alumni, and I felt like since my freshman oh. year, we've slowly seen some cool traditions die. For this, that, the other, uh, but some traditions I feel like have a lot of value and just that they're fun um, and that they're morale. I think morale is a valid reason to have things. I think it's important and if we don't take care of ourselves, we can't take care of other people. So it's important that we have just little things that connect us to each other and that make us happy and make put a smile on our face. So the, the rat sale is a napkin that they tuck into their shirt and they design it as a as a training company so they have some unity in there some morale because they get to have like just something silly that they did together and they get to show off um so that's why i did it and i'm hoping to do that with a couple other things this year just just for the purpose of unity cohesion and morale because i feel like we fo we often focus so much on professional development that we forget to enjoy ourselves um and speaking of that, Zeta, <laughs> Slam, um, it's great. It adds a lot of balance to my life. Um, it's definitely different. It's good for me to have like that that female interaction uh, with girls that are that are different and outside of this mindset, and it helps me kind of be more well rounded and also take a load off and let loose everyone for a while. So Zeta's great. <laughs> right on. Good. All right, <clears throat> we're gonna close it out. We're gonna get us across the finish line. Rapid fire questions. Carson, what was going through your mind when your brother kicked out your front teeth? Right, okay, so we were sledding. And he yeah. got, he had the grand, he had the grand <laughs> idea to, he really wanted to lay down face first on the sled, but we wanted to sled together, besties and whatever. So he's like, just sit on the back. And I was like, cool. It didn't occur to me that his feet were right here. So, the wonderful and awesome driver he is, he almost steered us into a tree, and to avoid it, he whipped us to the side and kicked back with all of his might and knocked my front teeth out. Um, my mom proceeded to make him spend, like, I feel like it was hours in the bloody snow, like, searching through the bloody snow with a cup to try and find my teeth the tooth fairy, um, and also mildly as punishment. They is he still found. alive? He is alive and he is at Ranger School right now, so maybe, I hope, probably a bit lighter than he started off. He's, he started Ranger School last Sunday, uh, so he's alive and well, uh, and I have my front teeth back, and they're real, so we're good. Not for the faint or weak hearted, but that's awesome. Alright, Zach, what song best sums up your song? It's constantly playing through my head like 24-7, but California Girls is, uh, is a banger and like I'd be flying a helicopter and instead of like Fortunate Son, it'd be California Girls and All right. I'm sitting there rocking. All right, top three songs by uh, Rex Orange County. Oh, um, television, the, I like 10 out of 10 and, and Pluto Projector. All right, finally to close us out. Why is the sky blue? The infantry. The God loves, loves the, the infantry. infantry. I knew that one. Outstanding. Woo! Well, guys, you crushed it. That was fantastic. 
One of the best shows I think we've ever done. This camera, this camera, this camera. Tell the people what you got going on in your life. Uh, really just excited to be back in school. You know, pretty, pretty tough classes. Got some classes. <laughs> we got a camera. I'm like, doing it off. This is like breaking the third Um, Really excited to keep... Breaking the, wait, we're allowed to break the fourth? Yeah, oh, the third one. Ben, no, it's the fourth. Go, keep it's, going. It's a wall. We're going to break through walls this semester with the winning culture in New River Italian. All right. Hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Can't speak for them. Thanks for joining us. River Forge. River hey, Forge. Forge. Hey, some.